Good morning and welcome to a Sunday service in my home. I'm going to begin by I'm going to begin by uh -oh. purchased this bowl at the Self-Realization Fellowship. Good morning, everyone. So happy you joined me this morning here in my home. I'll ring the gong so that we know to begin. This gong is a gong that was given to me from one of my practitioner classes years ago. I love it. It's such a beautiful sound. And it's a wonderful way we're going to begin with a little meditation because I think many of us can use meditation these days. So make yourself comfortable, sit. Sit so that you are comfortable and Legs and legs and arms and everything uncrossed. And put your attention on your breath. Just notice, are you breathing in? Are you breathing out? We might have a couple of guests here in any minute. Uh, they're st sitting at my door. They have been in and out this morning. And we're going to just let them be whatever they are. If they come in, you might see them. Otherwise, we'll just let it be. <sighs> The breath is the breath of life, so I invite you to let your body completely relax. You can use the breath to do that by breathing in, breathing out, and taking a nice deep inhale in and holding it for a few seconds. And then when you exhale, let your body relax. Drop those shoulders. Let's do it again. Inhale, hold. And exhale. <sighs> now, the next time we do the exhale, let it sound like a gush of air rushing out from you. Inhale, hold, and oh. Again, letting those shoulders drop, letting your body fully relax. Scan your body now from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. Be aware, be aware. If 
there's any part of your body that's tight, go to that part and send it some love. Bring some love to that part of your body. I'm noticing it both in my shoulders and in my solar plexus, a little bit of tightness this morning. Hmm. So I love to send love to my shoulders and I send love to my solar plexus. The purpose of this meditation is to help us be ready for new ideas, for healing ideas, for a healing experience. And most of it is going to be in silence. Just keep letting yourself relax. When you've scanned your whole body and sent any places that need love, the love that is needed, put your attention on your breath. This is just to keep you in the present moment. Notice if you're breathing in or out. It no longer has to be a deep breath unless that's going to help you. Anytime that you feel yourself tightening up in any place, Take a nice deep breath and let go. There's nothing you need do. It's normal to breathe. In fact, the breath of God is breathing you. Just let it be. perfectly calm and in the present moment, take your awareness to the secret place of the Most High within you. Some people call it the cave of the heart. And this place being the dwelling place of the holiest of holies is filled with light. Feel that light radiating out of your body, from, from your heart, through your fingertips, through your limbs. The light of God is calm and perfect. your light right here, right now. One of my visitors is just dangerously close to the tripod. Come on, Snuffy. Come on. Come here.
are in that secret place of the Most High, that light place within, you are connected with Source. There is not God and, there's just God as. And it feels yummy. It feels so real. Just allow yourself to be there. And we'll take, my intention is to take a few minutes of silence. And men. They are not used to candles. <laughs> and I was a little nervous with them being up there. Um, so this is what I know. I know that since there's no time or space in the infinite, that that was more than enough time for us to get centered in that divine love that is God's presence. No, you're still not going to be going up there. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you were all amused as they were behind me. Anyway, thanks for joining today. Um, my, my message is really, my message is really about um, the divine feminine as the strength of nurturing. And what a great topic for what we, where we are today. What a great topic for us since we're sheltered at home and um, we are in a pandemic that we've never, I've never been in and I never even imagined what it would be like. It is so great to mm, to connect this way and it is so uh, uh, disconcerting that I don't have a model for myself except that that isn't true because what we know is that each one of us has divine connection to source within and if we just drop down from our head to our heart and ask we will be directed, we're always directed, we're guided. That source is always right where we are, in us, through us, around us, as us, and for us. So, here's what I wanted to say about that nurturing. Years ago, many of you have heard this, a true story. I was, it was a Mother's, the Saturday before Mother's Day, and I was shopping in Trader Joe's for something and there was a dad with a little five-year-old and he had purchased some flowers for the boy's mother for his wife and the boy was being a rambunctious little boy and he was dragging those flowers his dad saw him and he said he bent down he was so kind he got right down eye to eye with the with his son and he said no and let's say his name was Bobby, because I've forgotten. But anyway, no, Bobby, flowers are like a little baby. You hold it like this. And he showed the boy how to hold the flowers and cradle them. And for the rest of the time that I was shopping in Trader Joy's, Joe's, that little boy was holding those flowers so tenderly, so gently, so sweetly, and that's an example of nurturing and the divine feminine being in all genders, all of us. It's not confined to women or females. It is in everybody, completely. And its nature is, is nurturing, its nature is compassion, its nature is kindness, its nature is love. So. Today, 
And like every day, we are talking about love and the benefits of love and how each one of us can have a, a happy, complete life right where we are. Even like me, if you're living by yourself and you are really honoring this, um, this rule that we will shelter in place. So whether you're honoring that or not, and I really hope you are, I know that we're making a difference because we know who we are. When I was thinking about this, I was thinking about how Americans, and I used to say you Americans, but now I as one too, Americans are proudly rugged individualists but we're also the best neighbors that anyone in the world could ever want to have. We are good to each other. We're good neighbors, we're good friends. We help one another, we lend a helping hand, maybe at a six foot distance right now, but we support one another. So although we're rugged individualists and might have resisted the social distancing, what I know is that each one of us is doing the best we can to ensure that others remain healthy and healthy and, and free from this virus. It is quite the virus. And I, I want to share with you a, a poem that was sent to me by Jim Lockhart. It's a long poem, but it's worth listening to. Before I share it, I want to say Practitioner Aidan Greeny and I have been praying together every day for the last three weeks. And this last week, it's been a lot about the coronavirus. And where Aidan got, and I just so salute his consciousness, his absolute consciousness of wholeness, is that since God is everywhere present, and God is in everything that God made, and God made everything, God has to be in the coronavirus as the coronavirus. So in other words, that there is a way of looking at this, that we can harmonize with it, that we can use it and still follow the science rules, follow the World Health Organization rules, the Center for Disease Control rules, the governor's rules to keep everybody happy, healthy, and safe. So I'm going to read you this poem written by Kristen, pardon me, that's really, it's a really good thing that I'm here at home and haven't touched anything else. It's written by Kristen Lintz and it's called An Imagined Letter from Corona to Humans. Stop. Just stop. It is no longer a request. It is a mandate. We will help you. We will bring the supersonic high-speed merry-go-round to a halt. We will stop the planes, the trains, the schools, the malls, the meetings, the frenetic, hurried, furied rush of illusions and obligations that keep you from hearing our single and shared beating heart. The way we breathe together in unison. Our obligation is to each other, as it has always been, even if, even though you have forgotten. We will inter interrupt this broadcast, this endless cacophonous broadcast of divisions and distractions to bring you this long breaking news. We are not well. Nope, none of us. All of us are suffering. Last year, the firestorms from that scorched the lungs of the earth and did not give you pause. Nor the typhoons in Africa, China, or Japan. Nor the fevered climates in Japan or India. You have, have not been listening. It is hard to listen when you're so busy all the time. 
hustling to uphold the comforts and conveniences that scaffold your lives. But the foundation is giving away. Buckling under the weight of your needs and desires, we will help you. We will bring the firestorms to your body. We will bring the fever, fever to your body. We will bring the burning, searing, and flooding to your lungs that you might hear. We are not well. Despite what you might think or feel, we are not the enemy. We are messenger. We are messenger. We are ally. We are a balancing force. We're asking you to stop, to be still, to listen, to move beyond your individual concerns and consider the concerns of all. To be with your ignorance, to find your humility, to relinquish your thinking minds and travel deep into the mind of your heart. To look into the sky, streaked with fewer planes, and see it, to notice it. To notice its conditions, clear, smoky, smoggy, rainy. How much do you need it to be healthy so that you can also be healthy. To look at the trees and see it, to notice its condition, how does its health contribute to the health of the sky, to the air you need to be healthy? To visit a river and see it, to notice its condition, clear, clean, murky, polluted, how much do you need to be healthy so that you may also be healthy? How does its health contribute to the health of the tree who contributes to the health of the sky so that you also may be healthy? Many are afraid now. Do not demonize your fear and also do not let it rule you. Instead, let it speak to you in your stillness. Listen to its wisdom. What might it be telling you about what is at work, at issue, at risk, beyond the threats of personal inconvenience and illness? Where did you go? <clears throat> As the health of a tree, a river, the sky tells you about the quality of your own health, what about might the quality of your health tell you about the health of the rivers, the trees, the sky, and all of us who share this planet with you? Stop. Notice if you are resisting. Notice what you are resisting. Ask why. Stop. Just stop. Be still. Listen. Ask us what we might teach you about illness and healing, about what might be required so that all may be well. We will help you if you listen. So Aiden, that's somewhat for you since you were so clear that this virus isn't separate from us and nor does it have to cause us illness. Even though I agree with the science, we, we support each other and we support our health workers by being apart from each other so we so that we flatten the curve and diminish the uh, the, the rapid spread of this disease so we're religious scientists we have principle to be, depend on and one of the quotes from for today about nurturing comes from Ernest Holmes and he says that the presence is always nurturing us. The presence is always nurturing us. Again, we might need to be still and listen so we know that it's nurturing us and, not, uh, and that we're not pushing against it or fighting against it. So I don't know how long we will, I'll be making these recordings from home. I'm so happy some of you joined in or lots of you joined in today. But I want us to use what we know, the principle that we know, to create the world that works for everyone. 
So I am imagining, I am imagining California being completely healed. I'm imagining no more illness caused by this virus. I'm imagining a beautiful experience of life that occurs when we can get back together and hold each other and hug one another and be closer than um, arm's length. I'm imagining being together in our beautiful center where there's music and singers and all sorts of wonderful things to help us realize the truth of our own being through the inspiration, through the, through the, the deep emotional connection we have through song, through music. Well, right now, I want to remind you of it, something that I really like the way Mary Morrissey taught this. She was telling us about how great a tool our memory is. And she quotes, um, she quotes the Queen and Alice in Alice in Wonderland when the Queen asks Alice, what did you do tomorrow? And Alice says, I can't do, tell you what I did tomorrow. It hasn't happened yet. And the Queen said, it's a pretty poor memory that only works one way. So we as religious scientists, we call it imagination. We call it intention. But if we're really clear, it's really memory acting in reverse. So, and what the, the tool that Mary gave us was to imagine that we're in a time machine. And that time machine was activated by us moving around one full circle counterclockwise. And then it was another time, a year from now, three years from now. I'm going to demonstrate that now and I encourage you at home to do the same thing. I'm going to imagine six months from now. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, hi, it's so good to see you. It's so wonderful. What an experience the last six months has been. I am so grateful that every member and friend of our center stayed healthy through that whole pandemic. And now we're healthy as a community. We're healthy as each other. We are, we're in support of each other during that time. We prayed together. We laughed together. We used our smartphones to, to do things like FaceTime or, um, or Zoom or any other conferencing devices that so we could connect with one another without being physically in the same room. For what we know is that presence of God is right within us, right here, right now. So what I know now being in the six months, I know that we're all well. I know our center is so filled with people, thriving with people. It is thriving with energy. It is a buzz with that wonderful energy that we hear every single service after service as people are connecting with one another and sharing a bite together and having that social time, which is God in expression, which is good in expression. Here's what I know. I know that if each one of us took a few minutes every single day, and jumped ahead in our imagination for what do we want for ourselves, for our center, for our loved ones, for our friends, for our family, young or old, for, um, for the activities, and got really clear. This is it. This is our opportunity, folks. We can do it. You know, this is a time this time, this pandemic, this social distancing is the time exactly for which we've come. It's the time that we can reach out, that we can 
be a blessing to others without without a, a physical hug. Last week when we were on skeleton crew, and I said, please so do practice social distancing. One of our beautiful members, Mary, came up to me like this and said, I'm giving you a virtual hug. So beloveds, right now I'm giving each one of you a virtual hug. And if you're in a home where there are other loved ones, give them a real hug and give the rest of us a virtual hug. This too shall pass. We are in it together, and we're in it together as the very highest and best that we can be as Americans, as humans, as beings of light. We always, have, each one of us has a bigger purpose than what we've been practicing so far. We're called to that purpose now. I'm so very grateful that it's so. So I simply accept, this is it, and so it is. I'm going to now pray with you. Um, I want to remind you that our center, we still have, we still have uh, needs. So you know that one of, the, one of the activities that we practice is the law of circulation. And we practice that because well, do it. To, let's do it together right now. Just hold your breath. I know lots of you can do it a lot longer than me, but you can't just take in, take in, take in, take in. At some time, you have to release and let go. The breath is a, such a good example of the law of circulation because we are breathing in, we are breathing out. And similarly, the law of circulation works in everything. It works in our body temples and it works in our organizations. It works in our homes. So whatever you want to prosper, whatever you want more of, give a little bit of it away or give a lot of it away. And that thing that you want more of will come rushing down to you. You have an opportunity, you could do it right now. Um, there's a, not, not on Facebook Live yet, but there is a button on our, um, on our website to donate or you can write out a check and send it in. Whatever works for you, however it works for you to participate in this law. If you're sending love, just send it. Just send it, if you're, just let it be already given to the center and to each other. If you're sending something else, um, some people have offered to do some errands for other people, and I'll talk more about that this afternoon at our Zoom meeting. Give, give what you would like to receive. Give it with love and give it with joy. So here's what I know about that. Whatever we give with love is already blessed from that love. And it's already multiplied and spilling over. <laughs> we are enough and it is enough. I'm going to close with prayer and then I'd like us to Sing if you're, I'm not going to sing, but you all can sing the peace song. Because indeed, we want there to be peace on earth. And the only place it can start is with me, with you. So, ha! Ah, in this holy moment of right now, this is what I know is true. I know that there is only one life. I know that that life is the life of infinite mind. It is whole, complete and perfect in absolutely every way. It is good and only good and very good. It is a wholeness, a unity. It is everywhere present. There is no absence of it anywhere. 
There is no spot where, oh, it isn't there. It's everywhere. So what I know is that it is right where I am, in me, through me, as me, and for me. And I speak my word for myself in the first person, and I invite you to take this prayer for yourselves as well. Knowing that I am one with divine mind, I rise up into a place of perfect wholeness, a consciousness of inclusivity and oneness. I see that I am here to be a dis difference maker, and I make the difference by knowing the truth for everyone. I know wholeness for myself. I know perfect health, perfect well-being, aliveness, vitality, and energy for me, and I know it for everyone else. I know that this power and presence that is God in me is, is infinite. And it isn't a puny little power, it's all power. So what I know is, what my intention is, is for wellness, for wholeness, vitality. What my intention is, is for prosperity and for good everywhere, good and greater good everywhere present. I know that God is my source, and because God is my source, and God is good, all is well and all shall be well. All is multiplying from that place of well-being. All fears have been washed away into the nothingness from which they came. I know that each one, that I am one with each other person, with each other thing, with each other sentient being, and all beings. And so I know that there is only a unity. And I know that unity everywhere, in health, in wealth, in, prosper, in, in creativity, and in all life experiences. God is good, and I am one with that goodness. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For this, I have come. I am so greatly blessed. And so we say or sing together, let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as my Father, united all are we. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Thanks for joining this morning. See you this afternoon. Bye for now.